Hey, what's up, YouTubers? Grant F here again, back with another great video review for you guys. And today, obviously, as you can see right in front of me, I got uh, Caesar and his uh, donning his war paint uh, makeup. I am going to give you uh, guys my review for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Um, saw a late night screening of this uh, last night with uh, my friend and his girlfriend. And uh, man, this movie uh, totally lived up to the hype. Uh, heard lots and lots and lots of good things about this film. It had, like, last time I checked, I think, like a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it did not disappoint at all. Um, it's way, 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 way better than the first one. Uh, the first one I even liked, but um, I think this one is like, it's almost like the Dark Knight slash The Empire Strikes Back uh, to this franchise, to uh, the new Planet of the Apes, you know, rebooted uh, series. Um, it's very, very memorable, very intense, uh, very dark, um, lots of, uh, great, uh, mocap acting, uh, from, you know, Andy Serkis as Caesar, uh, and, uh, the main villain, uh, Koba, uh, I can't remember the actor's name that did the mocap for him, but he was phenomenal, but, um, for those of y'all that have, ne that have, that haven't seen the trailers for the new Dawn of the Planet of the Apes film, or aren't really familiar with the story or the mythos, um, I'll basically, uh, you know, give you guys the story uh, that we have thus far since the last film. Uh, in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which came out uh, summer 2011, it was a reboot of the Planet of the Apes film series. Uh, James Franco plays this scientist named Will that is trying to discover a cure for Alzheimer's. His dad, played by John Lithgow, was, you know, unfortunately contracted Alzheimer's disease and uh, Will works in a laboratory where he's trying to de uh, develop a synthetic, um, you know, drug that can cure Alzheimer's. And so they start experimenting with these uh, drugs on apes, on chimpanzees. And uh, the side effects are unstable and they end up having to put all the apes down. Um, except for one, which is little baby Caesar, who James Franco feels sorry for, doesn't want to kill, doesn't want to euthanize and takes him home. He raises Caesar like he's one of his own, like he's his son, and Caesar slowly comes to terms with himself as being a, not a normal ape, being a, you know, basically thinking and, you know, sentient, almost like a human. He just looks like an ape, but he's very, very smart and can grasp things almost quicker than humans can. Um, there's an incident that happens that... Uh, the city ends up, the city of San Francisco ends up uh, taking custody of Caesar and putting him in a chimpanzee uh, shelter. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Caesar gets picked on. Um, he gets kind of mocked and ridiculed because he obviously is different from all the other chimps. These are wild, you know, normal chimps that haven't been experimented on, but Caesar has this drug in his system and he's very smart. And so he starts to kind of win over uh, the, the minds and hearts of the chimps and starts to develop an up, you know, starts to uh, churn up an uprising. And uh, the chimps break free from their sanctuary, uh, cause chaos in the, in the streets of San Francisco, uh, have a big, huge climactic battle on the bridge, on the Golden Gate Bridge, and then flee into the forest, never to be seen again. Um, that is basically Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and that's where we lie with the second film. Now, when the uh, the simian, uh, the ape antidote, basically the virus from the first film, gets into contact with humans, it kills them very quickly, like within a few days. And at the beginning of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, you see that eight to ten years have gone by, and almost all of humanity has been wiped out by this horrendous plague, this horrible simian virus that's killed, you know, um, 75, 60, I think they said like 75% of the people of the planet have been wiped out, uh, if not more. And um, basically, uh, Gary Oldman and Jason Clark and like a small band of people, I think it's like several hundred or like maybe close to a thousand people are pretty much all that's left um, of humanity. And Caesar, uh, while well, on the other hand, Caesar's family has flourished. They've uh, developed their own education system. They've developed their own laws, their own culture, their own, you know, um, little village. 
And it's really cool to see these apes, you know, like signing and talking to each other. You see subtitles on the screen. They they do talk, you know, that but it's mostly like ape home, ape family. Like it's they don't talk like you and I talk. Um, it's kind of a broken language for them because they're apes and they haven't really fully grasp the English language just yet, which I'm sure in later films, I bet you will see them talking fluently like we are, because as the second film goes, they're, they're evolving and they're getting smarter and smarter. Um, but the whole dynamic of these apes and their, their, con their code of conduct, their laws, it's, it's really cool to see them around each other and basically act as one um, huge family, one huge pride of apes. Um, unfortunately... The humans, uh, Jason Clark and Gary Oldman and all the humans are getting very desperate. Uh, they're running out of fuel, they're running out of resources, and they're in a last-ditch effort, they try to venture out past their borders to a dam that uh, runs off of raw energy that they want to repair so that they can give uh, the city back power where they're at. And unfortunately, in the way of this dam is Caesar's home with all the apes, and uh, conflict ensues and a war, you know, tension, and eventually war starts between the humans and the apes. And uh, I don't want to spoil uh, anything more than that, but um, there is agreements and disagreements on both sides. If this film really uh, has a really good moral center and a really good theme of trying to maintain peace during difficult times, uh, it's it's very um, Almost, I wouldn't say it's like an anti-war film, but it definitely is about getting past other, you know, other individuals' differences and working together for a greater good. Um, you know, the apes do not trust the humans, especially uh, Caesar's like right-hand man Koba uh, does not trust them because he was experimented on and you know treated pretty cruelly on in the last film, and uh, or at least there's scenes that you know indicate that we haven't that we didn't see in the last film but he talks about it that he was mistreated and tortured and experimented on and stuff um so he has an extreme dislike and just you know hatred of humans whereas caesar you know he doesn't want to get caught into a conflict and lose everything that they've worked so hard to build whereas gary oldman is like koba's character he doesn't trust the apes because the simian flu killed his whole family Killed his, you know, took his children from him, killed his wife, killed everybody he loved, and he's just trying to, you know, do what he thinks is, is best for for the human race. You know, Kobo, vice versa. He's trying to do what is best for the ape race. And you have these two, uh, these two ideas, these two ideologies butting heads, and it's just, it's just a, a pressure cooker until something just, you know, snaps and explodes. And um, it, it's, you know, it's. Kind of a tragic film because you you see how the apes and the humans can work together and can get things accomplished, but the, you know somebody always has to ruin it for everybody. There's always going to be conflict and indifferences with with individuals. That's just how the world is. People always fear what they don't understand. Um, people do not like uh, you know other people from other walks of life because of their beliefs or because of of how they look, because of their laws, you know, their culture, whatever. I mean, it's it's really uh, just almost like a commentary on uh, on really just global conflicts that are that are going on in the world right now and that have gone on for history, uh, for you know the entire history of the world. Um, it's a really really well acted film. Uh, the motion capture by Weta Digital they they really upped their game in this uh, new film. The effects are just seamless. Um, you, the, you don't think you're looking at a digital character. You think you're looking at a real chimpanzee, at a real ape, a real gorilla, a real orangutan. Um, it, it's absolutely amazing. It, it looks incredible. There's close-ups on their face where you can see, you know, where it's raining. You can see beads of rain or sweat dripping down their faces. And, uh, you know, their, eye, their irises, you can see, like, really good detail. Um, it, it's absolutely amazing and you can see the performances in these in these apes faces through the performances of the actors that are in the mocap suits um, you can definitely you know see their emotions and their their lips and their their nose crinkle up and it's just it's really a techno technological marvel um, as how far they've come with motion capture now uh, 
if I had any complaints about the film, I will say that it kind of it kind of goes on for a little too long in the last like five, ten minutes of the film. It, it kind of like you think it's gonna end and then it doesn't, and then another scene happens, and then it's not like it's not like as bad as like Lord of the Rings Return of the King bad. It's not like that, but like it probably could have been edited down like maybe like three or four more minutes cut out uh, just to make it, you know, more concise. But that's, I'm, I'm really at this point, I'm almost fucking nitpicking. But um, everything else about this film, I loved. It was flawless. The score was good. It even had a, there's little musical flourishes in the score that even call back to the original Planet of the Apes. Like the xylophones, the do 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 It's... It's you kind of have to hear it to understand what I'm talking about, like to hear both the original score and this one. But once you hear it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it almost seemed like a callback to the original Ape score. Um, the direction was great, the editing was great, the cinematography was really beautiful. Uh, the forest, you know, like in the rain and the in the mist. Um, the the sound was incredible that the apes made. You know, each ape had a dis- had a distinct voice and and sound to them. Um, I definitely give this uh, film a, a great, uh, great rating. Um, if I had to give it a, on a scale of, uh, you know, 1 out of 10, I would probably give it a 9 to 9.5 out of 10. Um, it's one of the best films that I've seen so far this year and easily probably my favorite film of the summer. Um, it even tops X-Men uh, Days of Future Past at this point, which I didn't think any film could surpass that one. But wow, this one was just uh, very good. Uh, ve- some very emotional scenes. Um a couple of scenes I almost actually kind of teared up a little bit too, and this is a film about, you know, walking, talking chimpanzees and apes, but uh, it, it really does tug at your heartstrings in some scenes, and it, the performances th- of the actors through the motion capture really, really uh, hit it home for uh, for you. It hit it home for me. So, uh, yeah, guys, that's my review for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Let me know, uh, let me know uh, y'all's thoughts and comments about the new film. Uh, you know, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if y'all want to see more of my reviews. And uh, I will uh, catch you guys on the flip side. Y'all have a good weekend. And, uh, yeah, take care. Peace.